United Nations Day, Whitehall was packed with sightseers as representatives of all the United Nations marched through the streets of London. In this great march were men from Canada, New Zealand and South Africa, India and the colonies. There were men from the Norwegian Navy, the fighting French and the Polish forces. They came too from the civil defense services of Britain, the NFS, the air raid wardens, and other veterans of the Blitz. And of course, men and women of the armed services of Britain. The Royal Canadian Navy marched proudly past the saluting base. Followed by a detachment from the Indian Navy and men of the Indian Army Service Corps. And of course, no parade could be complete without Highlanders. In this case, the band of the Scots Guards and the famous band of the Royal Air Force. When the show was over, the mall was jammed with homeward bound spectators. And next time, it will be a victory parade. Senior officers of the Royal Canadian Army Medical Corps saw recently a demonstration at Alton Convalescent Hospital of the rehabilitation training given to convalescent patients. The men spend a great part of each day in the open air doing exercises specially designed to strengthen the injured limbs and bring new strength and facility to strained muscles. It is important to start using the injured limb again as soon as possible even if it is in a cast. This not only hastens recovery, but gives the patient confidence that the fracture is healing quickly. Different games benefit different types of injury, and pinball is used for fractures of the lower limb. A variation of volleyball, known as service ball, is useful for abdominal cases and as a good all-round exercise. And so, modern medicine is speeding up recovery of cases that formerly took months to cure. And it won't be long now before these men are returned to their units fighting fit. to a flying start in this year's first corps, Royal Canadian Army Service Corps sports meet, and the mile is being hotly contested. It's a neck and neck finish, and Corporal Oxley is the winner. He's from Brantford, Ontario. Congratulations, Corporal. The 220 was another thrilling race, resulting in a win for Private V.A. Vimbor of Montreal, with Private A.A. Otto of Winnipeg, second and J.C. Laundrio of Massey, Ontario, third. And in the tug of war, it was the third division team that was just a little too good for the rest of them. <laughs> Included in the day's program was a demonstration of physical training by men of Southeastern Command. Try this on your battle course sometime. Then came the prize giving, with Major General R.F.L. Keller presenting the awards. Private Vimbor of Montreal got his for the 220 dash. While Private Baker got his for the 880. And the award for the running broad jump went to Lieutenant W.E. Swinton of Aurelia, Ontario. Major General E.L.M. Burns saw Captain A.W. Peters of Hamilton awarded his prize for winning the shot put, and General Keller presented the championship pennant to Captain D.P. Lettingham of the winning 3rd Division team. To one of London's great airports, a giant aircraft of ferry command brought Canada's Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Kenneth Stewart, 
on one of his frequent visits to the Canadian Army in Britain. Present to meet him were Major General the Honorable P.J. Montague and other senior officers. This time the visit of the CGS held a special significance. Within 48 hours of his arrival, Canadian, British and American troops struck at Sicily. And now the general staffs of the United Nations watch closely while their long laid plans go into operation. The aerial bombardment of Pantelleria opened up a new technique in the science of attack. The process of softening up had reached a new peak. The lesson was well learned and was applied on an even greater scale to the next stepping stone to victory, Sicily. Working hand in hand with the RAF were squadrons of the Royal Canadian Air Force flying Boston's and Wellington's. operational pictures shot by the RCAF film unit show Boston medium bombers of a Canadian squadron preparing to add their not so little bit to the softening up of Sicily. In the six days and nights before the Allied troops set foot on the beaches of Sicily, the island took the most merciless pounding that any one target has ever experienced in the history of war. Veteran Canadian pilots played a big part in the destruction, little knowing that their fellow countrymen were soon to play an even bigger part in the actual invasion. These steam hammer blows on Sicily's airfields and communications paved the way for invasion. The Axis lifeline to the Italian mainland was practically cut. Military traffic was reduced to a trickle. Air bases were rendered useless and harbors made untenable. This is the real meaning of air power, truly a vital factor in combined operations. We've done a lot of talking about Canadians getting ready for the big day. Well, here it really is. Part of the final training undertaken by the 1st Division prior to its departure for Sicily was in hill climbing to prepare themselves for the rugged country that lay ahead. And though the going was tough, there wasn't a grumble to be heard, for this was the dress rehearsal for the big show. Canadian soldiers are pretty cynical about departures now. They've been too close to battle too many times before to believe in it before they see it. So even the journey to the port didn't excite them much. But things looked considerably brighter when they actually went aboard the big liners that were to take them somewhere into the unknown. Hearts were light and smiles were happy, for this was it. went along with the rest of the medicals, destined to be the first women in the Canadian forces to serve in a theater of operations. The last doubt disappeared when the transports finally put to sea. Yes, this is it. It didn't take long to settle down into regular troop ship routine. Few knew their destination. You are still their destiny. But wherever they were bound or whatever their appointed task, these men had supreme confidence in themselves and in their fighting ability. And on the beaches of Sicily, they proved it.